What is up, YouTube? Welcome to the Battle Royale Guide Episode 2. We're talking about looting in this episode. Previously, we talked about things that you should do when you're starting up, and in the last episode, we talked about parachuting. So, to start out with, when we're talking about looting, the first things that I'm going to get into are the things that you should be looking for when you're looting. Now, the very first thing that you should be looking for, as soon as you get to the spot that you're looting, is a weapon. You need to get a gun right off the start. You need to be able to defend yourself in case there's any other guys by you. Any guys going to come in, you don't want them to have a weapon and you don't. It's important to try to get a gun as soon as you get to the spot that you're looting. Starting out, doesn't matter what gun it is, get whatever you can find. The first gun that you find is going to work out. Um, but after that, moving forward, the weapons that you should probably be looking for the most are 5.56 five, guns. Preferably, um, I, in my recommendation, what I would recommend would be looking for the TRG-21. TRG-21 is a very good gun, has very low recoil, has a fast fire rate. Its optic is a little bit off at 300 meters, but it's a damn good 5.56 five, gun. Top one in my book. Um, the next gun after that, I would say the Mark 16 Sniper Variant. The Mark 16 Sniper Variant, very damn good. Not as good a fire rate as the TRG, but recoil is very easy to control. The sights are on. It's an awesome gun. And then the next 5.56 five, that I would recommend is the Mark 20 EGLM. Um, the reason is, is that gun has also fast fire rate. It's not as good recoil-wise. Recoil -wise. It's hard to control the recoil, um, but it's accurate. Um, and the biggest reason for picking it up is it still has a silencer that is currently bugged in the game. Um, if you silence the Mark 20 EGLM and fire at someone that's past about 60 meters, they're not going to be able to hear you shoot the gun. So that would be the uh, those would be the the 556 five, guns that I recommend. But most of all, you're wanting to probably find a 6.5 weapon, preferably an MX or a Katiba. Um, when it comes to MX and Katiba, they're both really good guns. It's going to come mostly down to preference. Um, the Katiba Carbine, I will say, um, it has fast damage fall off because of the, the lower bullet velocity. It drops bullet velocity really quick since it's a carbine. Um, and the recoil is uh, atrocious. The atrocious on the carbine, it's all over the place. It's a very hard gun to spray, but the damage is very high. Definitely, if you get the chance to pick up a 6.5, even if it's even if it's a Katiba carbine, you should definitely consider doing so. And then the last gun that I would say that you're wanting to be uh, looking for is the Lee Enfield. It's going to be your long-range gun. Um, it has the most power out of any of the non-crate weapons. Um, it's 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 really good right now. The Lee just barely got changed over from the uh, the old Lee to the Cup Lee. And it's got a faster fire rate, and the damage um, is about on par to a little bit better than the old Lee Enfield. So those are the weapons that you should be looking for. Now let's jump into armor. Armor is probably the second most important thing. You want to get armor really quick off the bat as well. Um, definitely the whole entire time through, you're going to be wanting to look for clothing armor. If you guys don't know, there's armor in the game in Armor 3 that has clothing. Mostly the CSAT fatigues. Um, if you don't uh, know about armored clothing... You should probably check out a previous vid that I did on armored clothing. I'll put an annotation on the screen somewhere if you guys are interested in checking that out. But when we're talking about armored clothing, I'm talking about urbans, um, recon fatigues, and the woolly pulley. Um, all those have armor. The woolly pulley is considered the best just because of its color and the inventory space. The urbans, recons, and woolly all have equal armor. The next thing that we're getting into, vests. Vest-wise, you're wanting to, at the very least, get a tier 2 during the looting phase. Um, tier 1s right now just aren't going to cut it. Um, chest damage got increased with the last patch. Tier 1s aren't going to really save you. Tier 1s can't even tank 165 bullet to the chest. So it, it's it's very a very bad idea to try to leave the looting area without getting at least a, two, uh, a tier 2. Um, preferably the police vest. The press vest would work as well. But the press vest doesn't have much inventory space. Um, when you're talking about tier 3 vest, you're... Those are the vests you're most wanting to find um, in the looting phase. Uh, preferably the carrier lights or the tan CTRG plate carrier. Um, they have the same armor as the GA carrier, which is the green vest. So there's the, the carrier light, that's the black vest. The CTRG vest, that's tan. And the GA carrier vest, which is green. The, the tan and the black one, carrier and the CTRG, can have more inventory space. Um, Armor-wise, I've tested them out. I've found no difference between the Tier 3 vests. Um, 
So go with a tier 3 if you can find it. Preferably go with the CTRG or the Carrier Lights if you've got an option between the two. If you guys don't know the level of the vest that you picked up, you can open your inventory, hover over the vest that you have equipped, and it will tell you the armor level. Same thing goes for helmets. Um, we should also talk about helmets when it comes to armor. Preferably look for a tier 4 or a tier 5 helmet. The defender helmets like I'm wearing currently in the video is a uh, gray defender helmet. There's also a tan one. Those are the tier 5s. There's the enhanced combat helmets that are tier 4s. Those are also very damn good helmets. Um, definitely want to get either a tier 4 or a tier 5 helmet. Now the next thing in the level of importance, we went over guns, we went over armor. The next thing that you should probably be looking for are meds. Um, you're wanting to get, I would say, at the very least, two first aid kits. And that's cutting it. Preferably you want three or more. Um, it's, it's really risky only leaving the looting area with one or two med kits. If you get in a fight, say the guy doesn't have another med kit, you get into another fight, you have to med up, you're out of meds. It's a really bad situation to find yourself in. You usually don't come out of that um, ahead all that often. Definitely you want to get at least three med kits. Be looking for out for med kits. Try to get three of them. Um, the next thing when we're talking about meds, obviously, are boosters. Um, if you guys don't know what boosters are, I'll also include, I include a video um, on the screen, an annotation, um, to bring you to that video so that you can, guys can learn more about boosters. Boosters, basically, they heal you over time. Um, they're painkillers and red goal. You're going to be wanting to get about six plus boosters. The minimum of six, preferably more, preferably upwards of about ten ish is where you'd want to be. Um, boosters are also very important. They're the only way to get you back to 100 HP after you've taken damage. You can use a med kit to get you up to 76, but you need boosters to heal you completely. Next thing on the priority list. You're going to be needing to get a good optic, preferably more than one, probably two, maybe even three. Um, the best optic, in my opinion, in the game is the RCO. I know people also like the ARCO. I prefer the dot sight on the 300 meter optic on the RCO. Um, if you guys don't know, RCO and ARCO are hybrid scopes. They have a dot sight on top and they have a long range scope on bottom that you can swap in between. I'm sure that most of you knew, that, knew about that. but I would say the RCO, personally, I like it more just because it's more precise with the dot sight of 300 meter scope. AR ARCO, also very good optic. Um, after that, if you can find those, the next two best that I would say are the MRCO and the ACOG. ACOG's got a pretty big um, chevron in its 300 meter scope, so it's not as accurate. It's hard to kind of um, be precise at longer ranges with it. Um, MRCO, it's always zeroed at 300 meters, so you got to take that into effect. Um, it's also, it's not a dot sight, it's just you have like the zoomed out part of the scope and then the further zoomed in part of the scope. It's good for long range, but the close range is a little bit um, off with the MRCO. It's also very hard to drag the MRCO across your screen really quick if you're aimed in and acquire targets fast because the scope, uh, you, like, you catch the size of the scope when it's moving. Um, so preferably, you're probably wanting to look for the RCO and the ARCO optics. Next thing we're going to talk about is ammo. When it comes to ammo, you're looking for non-traced ammunition. Um, if you've got a 5.56, you're looking for 30 round reload tracers. Reload tracers, the first 25 rounds are non-traced and the last 5 rounds in the mag are tracered. Um, it's to basically show that you're getting close to a point where you need to reload. Um, preferably if you're using those, shoot off the first 25 rounds and then reload into another non-traced mag so that you don't give away your position. Um, even better, though, than the reload tracers are infrared tracers. Those are actually only good for really uh, day games. Night games are not going to be as good. Infrared only shows up on night vision. So basically in the day, it's 30 non-trace rounds. In the night game, it's going to show up in uh, people's night vision. They'll be able to see it. Um, also, you can talk about the 20 rounders, the 20 round stand eggs. First 15 are non-trace. The last five are trace. So those are also an option. You're wanting to go with non-traced ammunition um, right at the start when you first get your gun. Pick up as much ammo as you can until you've got about six mags, even if it's tracered, because it's not really going to matter up close and personal in the most fights that you're going to be in at the start. Um, you just need ammo. You don't want to end up running out of ammo at the very beginning of the game and getting killed for it. When it comes to 6.5 ammo, I would recommend picking up all of it that you possibly can. 
Of course, later on in the game, if you don't find a 6.5, you can get rid of it. But pick up the MX um, non-tracered and the tracer ammo. Pick up the Katiba tr uh, tracered and non-tracered ammo. The reason being, 6.5 ammo is pretty rare. If you happen to find a 6.5 gun, you want as much ammo for it as possible. You're preferably going to want to use the stronger gun, so definitely pick that up as well. And also, something to mention, Lee Enfield. Definitely pick up, I would say, up to about 4 clips of Lee. Uh, 40, 40, ma uh, 40 rounds of Lee Enfield should do you pretty well for the rest of the game if you happen to find one. So definitely count that in as well. Also can mention that you can pick up ammo for the crate rifles. If you think you're going to get lucky, you maybe get a crate. Um, if you're a newer player to the game, you're probably not going to want to go for a whole lot of crates at the start. You need to kind of figure it out and fill it out. We'll talk about crates more in a future video. But just know that it's also viable to pick up some of the crate ammo. Don't pick up a lot of it and space it out because it's not likely that you're going to get just one crate gun. Um, if you end up going to a crate, if you've got a bunch of Mark 17 ammo, it's not going to do you any good um, But if you go to a crate and you find a SA-58 because it doesn't take the same ammunition, of course. I forgot to mention it. Um, when it comes to 5.56, you're probably going to want to be aiming for about 8 mags um, at the very least. Uh, 8 mags, you want to be having, making sure that you have enough ammo for the rest of the game. 8 mags should do you good. You're wanting to be aiming for 8 non-traced mags of 5.56. Next thing we're going to be talking about are backpacks. Um, the backpacks that I would recommend looking for are the Bergen and the kit bag. The Bergen black and green are the best of the Bergens uh, camouflage wise. I would say the kit bag's always a tan color. It's pretty good for Bazkata. Um, to put this in perspective, the Bergens can hold um, in five, five, six mags. They can both hold 35 mags. Now, the carry-all, which I would say is either the third or the fourth best pack, backpack, actually holds more. It can hold up to 40 mags. But the thing that you gain with the Bergen and the kit bag um, over the carry-all, even though they hold less, they have a much smaller profile. Um, they're much harder to spot. Where the carry-all is like a giant shell on your back. You look like a Ninja Turtle running around, quite frankly. Um... <laughs> Um, even though it holds more, it's just a giant bag. It sticks out of bushes. It's easy to spot like when you're crouching going up over hills or whatnot. It has a giant profile, so it's easy to spot it. Um, the other backpack that I would also recommend to consider, um, maybe if you don't find the Bergen or the kit bag, is the filled pack. It can only hold uh, 25, 5.56 five, mags, but it's a very small profile, and sometimes you don't need to hold a lot of gear. Next thing we're going to talk about are MISC items. Um, to start out with, we're going to talk about binoculars. Binoculars are a very important item. Always pick up binoculars. Not only are they good for spotting people, but they're also very good for sprinting and running in faster to, uh, to circles. Um, if you pull your binos out, you actually sling your gun on your back, and you'll run it 350 meters per minute. Now, if you have your gun out, you'll run it 300 meters per minute. Um, also, a pro tip, an advanced tip, um, if you pull your binos out, move them from being equipped to your inventory, your gun will stay slinged on your back and you'll run at 400 meters per minute. Um, so that might save your life later on when you're trying to run into circles or maybe just trying to run faster to cover. Um, that last tip that I brought up was brought up to me by one of my viewers. His name is Zach Swaga. I'll give him credit in this video. It's a very good tip that he discovered. Next, we're talking about MISC items. We're going to be talking about grenades and smoke grenades. Now, grenades, RGOs, and RGNs, if you don't know, RGO is the grenade that you can't throw quite as far as an RGN, but it has a bigger blast radius, a bigger kill radius. Um, the RGN is more of an offensive grenade. Um, you can throw it much further distance. Um, it doesn't have as much of a blast distance, not as much of a kill distance, but like I said, it goes much further. Now, let's also get into smoke grenades. Smoke grenades, um, a lot of people don't know a lot of good uses for them. Smoke grenades are very, very good for late game. Um, when you're getting down to the final circles, if you're coming in from a certain side of the circle and you don't have cover, it might be a great idea to have a bunch of smoke grenades um, to provide yourself with some concealment. Honestly, try to aim to pick up about six grenades, six smoke grenades. Um, you throw them all out, lay down a giant smoke wall. Um, it might save your life in the late game. Uh, there's other things that you can use them for, for like distracting people. You can throw one, maybe the people try uh, it catches their eye and they start looking towards that, providing a, a time for you to flank. 
Um, there's many uses for smoke grenades. Be creative. I'm sure more people out there can think of even uh, other good reasons to use them. The last thing I'm going to touch on are vehicle repair kits. Now, if you're far out from a circle, there's a chance that you might crash a vehicle. Um, even if you don't have a vehicle, it's a very good idea to pick up a vehicle repair kit if you're far outside a circle. Maybe you find a vehicle that someone crashed um, later on when you're running in, and it might save your life that you have a vehicle repair kit to repair that vehicle. Um, vehicle repair kits, they take up quite a bit of space. If you get to the point where you know the circle's close enough and you don't need it, just drop it on the ground. Um, it's always better to have one and not need it than to not have it and need one. That's going to conclude talking about the looting phase. I'm also going to make another video. It's going to be looting part two. It's going to go into talking about certain areas that you can look to to go and find good gear and certain building types to look for to try to get good gear. This video is going on longer than I wanted it to, so we'll definitely do that in a separate video. It should be coming out also very soon after this one. But yo guys, thank you for watching. I hope the video was helpful, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. If you found the video helpful or you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe for future content, plenty more videos coming out on the channel, including more armor highlights, more game highlights, and the Battle Royale Guide.